All right. Hi, class. Welcome back. This is the week four introduction video. Um, I want to start this week by uh, giving you a friendly reminder uh, that if you look at the schedule and the syllabus, you will see that at the end of week five, uh, you will be asked to complete a midterm exam, which will cover the, the chapters that we have covered so far this term. Um, you may wonder, what is the format of the exam? How is the exam to be administered? Um, for some reason, this is changing. Whatever. Uh, great, I, li I like this backdrop more. Um, the exam will be a mixture of a variety of, of question types, in addition to basic multiple choice questions. Um, I'm also going to, to encourage you to um, think more about the topics that we have looked at through the mode of short answer and essay questions. Um, I should speak shortly about essay questions because of the questions that I've been seeing. Uh, students in this, um, in this section have been having the most trouble with essay questions. Um, I'm prepared to give you some, some advice uh, in the term of a, like a written page. But for our time right now, let me just explain. With an essay question, uh, I expect essays to be thesis-based meaning that there is a central argument that you are making. I want you to take a stand, take a chance. I mean, make a claim that goes beyond um, simple observations and make an argument that then can be supported with historical evidences. So you don't have to necessarily be right uh, or correct or hist historically uh, within the bounds established by historians. You can make any claim that you want. Making a claim isn't, necessar isn't necessary to be correct. What I'm most interested is that you are able to make a claim and then are able to support that claim with historical, accurate uh, descriptions and topics. So if you want to argue that the United States was wrong in, um, in waging war in World War I, that's completely fine. Right? That is a legitimate, fine argument. But you have to be able to support that argument with specific details. So just because you have an opinion uh, doesn't mean that your opinion is, quote unquote, correct. So have an opinion, but support that opinion with historical evidence. Uh, essay questions, therefore, should be organized around that thesis statement. Make your claim, and in the following paragraphs, yes, I said plural, paragraphs, explain how you came to that conclusion or that, um, or that belief or that feeling or that opinion about this topic. So, uh, go into detail about the historical evidence. And I think I've said that many times now. So, much of what I've been seeing thus far this term uh, is a simple three-sentence response. A three-sentence response may constitute a paragraph, but it is not an essay. So, especially in this exam, where so much is riding on your ability to explain yourself. Right? And these exams combined, the midterm and final exam, are worth 50% of your total grade. It is imperative that you spend time crafting a careful um, argument. Uh, if you need examples, uh, I will be happy to provide some and give you some feedback on what you've written. Um, but again, midterm exam will be due next week, or sorry, at the end of week five. Um, okay, so this week we are going to be looking at, um, in week four, industrialization, immigration, and urbanization, uh, which is what I call the three shuns. Immigration, of course, is a reference to the record-breaking number of immigrants who were flocking to the shores of the United States at the end of the 19th century. Um, some popular statistics suggest that by, that by uh, the turn of the century, one in three Americans was foreign born, meaning that in their lifetime, they had been born in another country and had immigrated to the United, St to the United States. Again, that was about one in three Americans. So if you're walking down Fifth Avenue in New York City, you look to your left and the right, uh, the odds are that one of, of these people would have been born in another country. So as much as uh, our country today is all um, uh, argumentative about the place of immigrants. Um, immigration today is nowhere near as bad as it was in the past. Um, and that was partly due because of our immigration policy, which was, we have no immigration policy. 
according to our country, uh, the laws of the time, essentially anyone, if they could uh, afford it, uh, could come to this country. Afford meaning they could buy passage on a ship. Uh, there were no visas. Uh, there were no interview questions. You just had to get here. All right, the second uh, industrialization is a reference to the uh, growing cities and the manufacturing um, that took place within those cities. Uh, with the total uh, brunt of, of immigration that came at this time, uh, cities were primed, uh, uh, were overloaded with, uh, uh, with workers. And so during the second great industrial revolution that took place in the latter half of the 19th century, uh, America's cities industrialization boomed. Um, which leads us to the third of these shuns, urbanization, which is just the growth of American cities. Now, not only were immigrants coming, um, but there was a major shift in the, the primary source of income for most American families, whereas during the time of Abraham Lincoln, most people uh, made their wages through farming. Right? People worked at home, um, had farms, grew their crops, and thus were able to provide for their families. During the Second Industrial Revolution, these uh, agriculturalists were uh, selling their farms and instead moving to the cities. And they're working in, in these industries, manufacturing, where they're therefore able to give of their time, earn wages to support their family and to uh, provide food for themselves. This was a major shift between the log cabin era and the more modern industrialized era that we often associate uh, with today. Uh, so this is a very important era. Uh, once again, though, in, in terms of our theme of insiders versus outsiders, if we look cl closely at uh, American immigration policies at this era, we begin to see relics of that same rationale of keeping the insiders inside and the outsiders out. Some of the things that we'll look at this week will include um, um, class information from Jacob Reese. Uh, as well as we'll look at some political cartoons published um, that uh, demonstrate how certain classes of immigrants, I'm thinking specifically about the Irish, about Jewish immigrants, about immigrants from Eastern and Southern Europe, were constituted as something different than their Northern and um, Western European immigrants. And this suggests something that's troublesome, that racism in the United States wasn't necessarily white versus black or white versus brown, but as evidence in this week's and I believe next week's material, we will see that there is such a thing as white on white racism, that there were classifications of who were the best whites and who were substandard whites. And so we will see, for instance, uh, in um, publications with Irish, um, Irish were constituted as the as the lowest of, uh, of whites. I, I find this stuff really fascinating and hope I can share that with you this week. If you have any questions, by all means, shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. Um, otherwise, sit down, uh, read your book, take the uh, quizzes. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, all the best. Bye.